Hello, hi everyone. So today we're going to talk about our last lecture, which is about strategic landscaping. So we're going to have a brief introduction uh, on what is basically strategic landscaping, and then we're going to see what is the functional use of landscape, right? And then uh, thirdly, we're going to see what is the difference between hardscape and softscape. And lastly, we're going to see um, the elements in uh, strategic landscaping, which is water features, and what are available for landscape um, in the future. We're going to start with the definition of what is actually landscape. Okay, according to Merriam-Webster, uh, landscape can be defined as a picture representing a view of natural inland scenery. So, meaning it's an outdoor environment. Okay, and then uh, it also can be defined as a portion of territory that can be viewed at one time from one place. Okay, as a concept, landscape is actually uh, includes the physical environment and also people's perception and the appreciation towards the environment. So it is not actually restricted to only visual, but also comprise uh, the individuals and communities' perception towards the natural and physical resources. Okay. So, uh, according to the New Zealand Institute of Landscape Architect, there are actually three broad categories of landscape attribute, which are number one, biophysical elements, patterns and processes. Okay, number two is sensory or perceptual qualities. Okay, this can be explained as an uh, example, as a view of a scenic landscape or distinctive smell and sound of the coast. Right? And then number three is the associative meanings and values, which include uh, spiritual, cultural, or social association. Okay, these can be examples as um, heritage sites, uh, popular walking spot, or a fishing spot. So that can be included uh, as a cultural meanings of a landscape. So biophysical elements actually uh, can be explained as the flora and fauna. Okay, and then uh, the sensory or perceptual qualities is where we, we hear or we see during, uh, using our five senses. So, for example, and these images um, is the uh, sound of the wave, right, at the beach. Okay, and then the third one is basically a cultural landscape or a so spiritual or social association. So, this is basically a Tegalalang Tairiu field, which is located in Bali. So for the next topic, uh, which is uh, what is basically the use or functions of landscape. So it's actually generally it can be divided into four, which is number one, beautification or aesthetic. Okay, when we see something beautiful or a landscape that is um, very aesthetically appealing. So that is uh, one of the functional use. Number two is privacy or noise barrier. So this basically uh, you can see at the neighborhood area where we plant trees uh, to have some privacy into our home. Right. Number three is cultural. Okay, cultural is basically very broad. So uh, referring to the Tegalalang Padi rice earlier. So this is one example of the functional use of landscape. Okay, number four is climate control. So this is basically um, where we can see um, a lot of elements, uh, landscape element being used to control um, any um, uh, hazard uh, or any climate uh, change towards our. Uh, country. Okay, the next one is what is basically softscape and hardscape. Okay, I think this one is very straightforward. Okay, softscape is actually refers to the horticulture or the living elements in a landscape um, factor. Okay, uh, it can be included uh, as uh, flowers, plants, shrub, trees, all the living elements. Okay, and then um, the term hardscape is actually contrast to the landscape, which is it's a non-living uh, elements or objects. Okay, so it can be referred to as pavers, stone, rocks, or uh, water features. Okay, uh, so this is uh, this can be called as the hardscape. So in a landscape element, uh, these two normally occur. Okay, so when we see, uh, for example, our backyard. So there are a living element, which is all the trees or the flowers. Okay, and then we can see a patios, a sitting area. So that is called hardscape. Okay, and then what is actually can be included or can be considered as 
components of softscape. So we already learned, already learned about what is softscape and hardscape. Uh, so under softscape, there are basically in generally three types of softscape. Okay, number one is trees or palm. Okay, number two is sharps. Okay, number three is ground covers. Okay, so for trees, basically it is just a normal tree. Okay, so in here we can see example of um, Samania Saman or um, I don't know what is the general name. Okay, but this is located as uh, in the Taiping uh, Lake Garden. Okay, which is a very big tree. Okay, um, inside scientifically it is called Samania Saman. Type of tree is um, Durio zipetinus, okay, which is called as durian, okay, and then on the right side is the Mangifera indica or mango tree, okay. So all type of trees and palms um, is also considered under the softscape element, okay. And then this is um, Cocos nucifera or uh, coconut tree, okay. In terms of shrubs, okay, all flowers, okay, all um, uh, trees that is not too big, okay, normally it's flowery, um, is uh, considered as shrubs, okay, uh, it is normally not too high, right, okay, so here examples is lantana chamara or in Malay we call it um, bunga teh ayam, okay, and then uh, the second one is rosa indica or we call it Rose, okay. The ground covers uh, normally is uh, is grass. Okay, generally it can call grass. But um, in the field of landscape, there are many types of grass. Okay, so here is basically uh, four types of different grass. Okay, number one is Japanese carpet grass. Okay, this one is among the most expensive one. Okay, and then cow grass. Cow grass is normal grass that we've seen uh, at the football field, etc. Okay, and then number three is the Philippine carpet grass. Okay, um, actually the term carpet grass is basically referred to grass that is um, quite expensive compared to the cow grass. Okay, and then pearl grass is also, uh, I think uh, it is very um, not common in Malaysia. Okay, so actually ground cover or, uh, is actually plant that grows over an area of ground. So it provides protection uh, from the soil uh, through uh, from erosion and drought. Okay, in an ecosystem, the ground cover forms the layer of vegetation below the shrubs. Okay, known as the herbaceous layer. Okay, so um, the the bottom part is the grass, and then the second part is the shrubs, and then the third layer uh, is the tree or palm. Okay, so in terms of water features, okay, this is actually a very famous element uh, to be included uh, in the landscape features. Okay, uh, so water feature is actually one or more items and there are many types of water feature. You can see uh, fountains, uh, you can see pool, ponds. Okay, so uh, all of this always um, can be included in the examples or in the projects of landscape architecture. Water features always uh, been um, as an enhancer to the landscape element. So right now, in the uh, we can see that um, water elements uh, have become one of main attraction um, in 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 the landscape element. So we can see there is um, innovation of musical water fountain. Okay, and then it attracts people to come, and uh, we actually are amazed by these uh, types of innovation. So what are um, potential of landscape in the future and generally um, how can it relate to our module uh, for the sustainable building, building design. So there are basically few types of uh, landscape uh, that is integrated with the sustainable building design. For example, number one, uh, we always see um, the innovation or the invention of green wall or the vertical landscape. Okay, and then we also see um, examples of rooftop garden design. Okay, and then um, lastly, what are actually 
these benefits of uh, green wall and rooftop to the sustainable building design. So what is actually a green wall? So green wall is commonly referred um, as a vertical garden or vertical landscape design. So this term is actually used to refer to all forms of vegetated wall surfaces. Okay, so that is why it's called a vertical landscape. Okay, apart from that, there are several terminologies that have been used uh, that refers to this vertical landscape, landscape such as uh, bio facade wall, vines on wall, bio shader, living wall, green facade, um, and also vertical greenery or vertical garden. Okay, so they are basically um, there is a system on how to construct this vertical landscape. But uh, two major types of green wall um, that normally commonly use is green facade and also living walls. Okay, under the green facade category, um, there are two other subcategories which includes uh, modular trellis panel system um, as well as cable and wire rope net system. Okay, and then for the living walls category, there are three subcategories falls in within which are modular living wall, vegetated mat wall, and also landscape wall. Here is basically the cross section of actually a typical vertical uh, landscape, right? So you can see there's a perimeter edging, okay, and then there is a building wall here. Okay, and then it should have a sheet of waterproofing. Okay, and then uh, uh, it also include the cleat hanger system or air gap. Okay, and then uh, you have you're gonna have the waterproof backer board, uh, and also a continuous back layer of fibrous growth media, and also front layer of uh, the growth media. So normally there is a basically a system on how to do this. Uh, vertical, uh, vertical landscape. The next one is uh, actually what is a rooftop garden design. So a rooftop garden design uh, is actually any garden that is placed on the roof of a building. So it can provide a lot of advantages, uh, not only to the extent of aesthetic, aesthetical appeal, but also it can reduce the temperature, Okay, enhance the existing architecture and also provide recreational opportunities to the building. Okay, and not just that, uh, rooftop garden also uh, in a way can decrease energy demand on space conditioning which then in, uh, emit the GHG. Okay, and then it provides uh, direct shedding of the roof, uh, evo transpirations and improve the insulation values. Okay, so if uh, the rooftop garden is widely implemented, it could cut off the urban heat island effect, right? Uh, which is, uh, I think it is quite ambitious, uh, but it can be done if everyone uh, involved in this. So, uh, it will end up uh, the, the, to decrease uh, of air pollution in the area, okay? And then uh, to decrease the excessive heat and inefficient resources. Okay. Uh, other than that, it also can help to improve stormwater management if appropriately executed in the metropolitan areas. Here is an uh, example on um, how uh, the rooftop garden can be implemented. So here is a section uh, of a roof garden. Okay, and then there is a layer on what is basically how roof garden can be constructed. You should have the waterproofing or the roof construction. Okay, and then you're going to put the protection layer and then the drainage layer, geotextile and lastly uh, is the plant. Okay. What actually is the benefits of green wall and rooftop garden design? Okay, so here is basically a simple explanation on what uh, are the benefits of the green wall and also rooftop garden design. Okay, for green wall, uh, it's actually have a space saving benefit because we have a high building. So uh, green wall is great for high rise and small urban development. Okay, and also it can be used for building insulation purposes. 
Alright, and then green walls add a distinctive style to any house or building. Okay, normally it it, it is uh, it can be seen as an aesthetic value towards the building, right? And then the cooling effect of the green wall plants uh, transpiring reduces uh, reduce the heat of the building. Okay, and then green walls also have a very good phonic qualities to absorb any sound. Okay, uh, other than that, uh, green walls also acts as a biofilter. And also, uh, it increases the green space in the urban environment, which will help to reduce the heat island effect. Mm -hmm. In comparison to the rooftop garden design, okay, rooftop garden design actually helps uh, to conserve energy and water. Okay, other than conserving, uh, it also improves the air and water quality. Okay, um, this may sound ambitious, but rooftop gardens uh, actually can be seen. Uh, to improve the storm water management and also absorb uh, solar radiation okay uh, other than that rooftop gardens also provide habitat restoration for wildlife okay and also can be used as a natural retreats uh, for the building users okay this can be seen at the metropolitan areas where people always enjoy each other company uh, at the rooftop garden Okay, and then lastly, rooftop gardens produce the sense of well-being that is created by our interactions with plants. So, uh, actually, this is for the metropolitan areas where people have um, less interaction with flora and fauna. So, rooftop garden design is among the solutions for the people to interact with uh, the softscape and hardscape elements. So overall, uh, green wall and also rooftop garden design shows that it may contribute to the well-being of the environment, human beings, and also wildlife. Okay, other than integrating these um, design elements, okay, into the green sustainable building design, okay, uh, a number of ecological and performance benefits, um, such as aesthetic improvement, carbon uh, carbon footprint reduction building facade protection as well as, well as temperature regulation. This application of uh, green system is very vital and important in order to create a balance uh, in the structural and natural development. So it will increase the level of sustainability, uh, especially in the urban um, or metropolitan areas. Okay. That is all my lecture for sustainable landscape. Okay, I hope that you guys understand or have a very brief idea on what is actually uh, landscape in relation to green sustainable building design. So if you have any question, uh, feel free to ask. Okay, um, and then after this, we're going to have a discussion um, on my role on uh, and some activities uh, to test your understanding regarding the topic. Thank you very much for joining uh, today's class. Okay, uh, so now let's do the tutorial exercise. Thank you. Joining our class today. How are you? Hi. Huh? <gasps> oh, hello. Hi. Hi. I want to see what you.